So how exactly do people measure the so-called uh, radioactive tracer diffusion coefficient or self diffusion coefficient? As we said, you're going to put a radioactive tracer into it, into the material, let's say two pieces by the ion implantation, high energy ion implanted into the material surface and put them together and measure over time. Seems depth profiling, XPS, depth profiling, something like that. Okay, and measure concentration profile. Concentration profile means change of concentration with location or distance. Okay, you get that. So the concentration profile initially, let's say at a very short time period of time, naturally, C with respect to location, something like this. In the beginning, narrow, very narrow distribution. And over time, of course, from T1 to T2 to T3, naturally, the peak become lower and extend out deeper, shallower for T2 and eventually for T3. Okay, and uh, if we say for the simple case that we can make the assumptions, there can be so-called analytical solution, which means these profile can be analytically modeled or described precisely. So if we say we put a fixed amount of radioactive tracer in here and assuming the so-called uh, semi-infinite, which is similar to what we discussed before as the so-called uh, spin undopened. Finite amount of material diffuse into your high purity, initially zero purity material, uh, high purity, zero dopant material, okay? Far away, always assuming zero concentration. And for those, that would be a mathematical description as what we learned before for the spin on dopant m is the total amount of stuff that you put in the local location d is your diffusion coefficient t is time x would be distance and for a any given time t which means okay you do this diffusion, of course, at a fixed temperature. You have to do this at a fixed temperature, otherwise the D would uh, change, right? Let's inject and hold this at a fixed temperature for a certain time. And for any given time, you get a profile and you can fit the profile into this data to get the so-called diffusion coefficient. And that one, you would have one of the, I believe, homework to, to do that. Okay. So now this table shows what? Different uh, crystal structure, different material or elements, actually. Most of, all of them are pure elements. Okay. And the TM for molten temperature given in Kelvin. Okay. D0, that's a so-called diffusion pre-exponential factor or frequency factor, okay? It has the same unit as diffusion coefficient. Here I'm using non-standard millimeter square per second. You can also use meter square per second or quite often centimeter square per second. Q, what? So-called quote-unquote activation energy has the unit of quite often, kilojoule per mole, if we are dealing with one molar stuff. And what is this term? Q over R times T, but that T is particular TM, melting temperature. And the D bracket, TM means diffusion coefficient at what temperature? TM at melting temperature. So we list these data for different material. And what uh, you would observe, okay, the numbers, quite often for similar material, these numbers can be similar, right? Similar material, similar melting point, similar crystal structure. Mm. Not too surprising, these numbers are similar for QD0, Q. 
and for these two, these, right? But uh, what we want to call your attention is this Q over RT value. Q over RTM value. It's kind of like a, for many of these material VCC, they are pretty similar. Even though their melting point can be pretty far away. Melting point are pretty far away means their bonding strengths are pretty far away. But then when we regulate this activation energy to this RT term, you find them they are pretty from here. You see? 300k, very low melting point. 2000k, high melting point. These numbers are pretty consistent. Make sense? Well, it's kind of like, okay, the bonding got re related to the activation energy. Because TM, melting point, is actually a measure of what? Of your bonding strength, right? Of your bonding strength. And it also doesn't surprise you that for the FCC, you also got a similar value here. Even though that's a change, double two times change in melting point. Make sense? Similarly, for D, the diffusion coefficient at the melting point. Okay, as long as they are similar, hmm, we may find the value to be similar. Of course, it's quite often between between the two types of material with the same crystal structure. But this term is actually very telling. Do you see that? Very different melting point, same crystal structure, but these terms are at least on the same order of magnitude. Actually highly comparable, but for diamond it's much higher. Okay, that reflects the bonding nature, the bonding strength, migration barrier. Okay, so that's what we want to call your attention. For different material, we would get a comparable Q over RTM value and the diffusion coefficient at melting point for similar material with the same crystal structure.